Hey friends, Jessica here. So in this video, I'm going to show you a little, um, it's not a little bit of an advanced trick if you want to recolor your threads right in Illustrator. And it's not even really that complicated. But the good thing is, is that I have enough thread colors that you can get almost everything you need. But if you need something a little, little bit more specific, I'm going to show you how to recolor the threads. And it's actually quite simple. So I've got this little plant here and I've already got a thread applied to it, but perhaps I want um, a slightly different shade. So um, there is in your brush file, it's not on the artboards file, but it's in the actual brushes file. At the end of every brush file, there's gonna be a plain uh, stroke that's gonna be called recolor stroke. And it's on all four of the main colored strokes. So you'll see this at the bottom and it's just a black stroke. So I'm using thread number one on this and I've got a green, but let's say I need a little bit of a different color of green. So first number one that I would do is I would select all your strokes and pick the closest color and the closest um, uh, like tint or shade, you know, like whether you, if you want it to be a light color, pick the first color in the set, you know, medium, dark or darker. And this is important because if you pick a, the, your base being a very light color and you're wanting it to make it a dark green, it won't happen. It's just going to color, use this as the base and the base is light. So I'm just going to grab this third one here and I'm happy with that. And it is good to um, make it get this close to the color that you want. Um, and you'll see why later when we layer the stroke. So I've got this simple stroke applied, one point, no big deal. So let's go to our appearance panel, and it's this one with a circle here. And if you don't see it, go to Window Appearance. And as you see the appearance here, I have no fill on these strokes. And then the stroke has that green stroke, um, number 222. So, or whatever color, whatever number it is. And now what I'm gonna do is with that, when I have that stroke selected on the appearance, I'm going to go over here to the bottom left and this is add new stroke. And so I'm adding another stroke on top of the stroke I already put. And I'm gonna take my opacity of this stroke, which is right underneath, and turn that to color. And then I'm going to over here, with this selected, okay, um, just make sure that you're on the top stroke before you shut that. And then I'm gonna go to my brush library and I'm gonna to go to the, brush, the same brush library that I'm using, so this is brush number one. If you're using a brush from number two, go to that library, three, four, so forth, So because they're all different. So I'm gonna grab that very last recolor stroke, and it turned it gray, because right over here, my stroke color is white. So whatever the stroke color is, it's gonna apply this color on top of it, and so it actually just grayed it out. So all I have to do is with that selected, double click the stroke, and then I can go over here, and let's say I want this like a little bit more of a turquoise, so I can click over like this, and click OK, and then it's gonna render it whatever color that you want, and you can always change this via here, so even if I wanted a little blue, so you can really have complete color control and change it to whatever color you want, and I spent loads of time to line up those strokes just right because it actually was quite complicated. <laughs> So this can be really helpful. Um, and if you have any questions, just let me know down below in the comments. And just be aware though, whenever you go back, you know, you're selecting this, that you've got two strokes on it. So if you get confused and you accidentally hit a different stroke, like if, say if I change this to like a green one on top, it, well, it's gonna use the, that for a color, but you know, um, just be aware of that, that you know you have, you have the, 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 the control of the top coloring stroke and then the base stroke all through this appearance window. And you can still like, um, you can still, uh, what is it, um, scale the stroke and all of that. And this can be really helpful because um, I give you the Photoshop extras and stuff. And I think Photoshop can be handy just at the very end stage. Um, but most of the time, with most of the artwork that I'm seeing, the, the little bevel and emboss effect in Photoshop that I have on the brushes, if you're, 
working, most of the time, it, it doesn't really make that big of a difference. So honestly, I'm finding myself working 100% with an illustrator these days, even though Photoshop is definitely my preferred program. And I'm definitely, you know, I just, I love the interface. I just, you know, I'm so comfortable in it. But for most of your work, I would definitely recommend staying with an illustrator because then also if you, you know, have another stroke on top of this stroke or something like that, you can give that a drop shadow independently without having like a million layers to bring into Photoshop and apply drop shadows to. So I think it's just really easy and I definitely um, recommend just staying with an illustrator. And then the cool thing is, is when you're done, you know, you can do everything with an illustrator almost. And when you're done, you can export it as a flattened um, JPEG or PSD or whatever. And then if you want, if you have like some thread, made, like little threads and stuff you want to recolor, you can just take like a, create another layer over it in Photoshop and use a basic brush to paint the color that you want to change a little bit. So it's, you know, that, that could save you a lot of time because I found it really is really easier just to stay with an illustrator rather than pulling over all the parts within Photoshop and reassembling them. So that's just my little tip from me to you. And before when I created the Photoshop files, the styles, I thought they were a little bit better, but really you're only gonna notice that if you have like a thread stitch that's like really big on, this, on the page. Most of the time you would not notice that. So I definitely recommend keeping your time, embracing Illustrator and enjoying these recolor stitches because it really lets you you have the fun of having like all the pre-made color stitches, um, but if you need that extra little bit of color control, then you're also set as well. So there's no reason you can have like literally every color. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that and message me below if you have any um, questions and stay tuned and follow me on Instagram because I'm now that I'm finishing this up, I'm going to start making lots of samples and um, follow along tutorials.